Hello everybody. First of all, I would like to thank you to the DEPCON organizers for giving me the chance to do this talk and also thank you all of you for attending the talk. My name is Ignasi Ramos. I work for Polygon GKBM and I am at the, at the protocol team. It's been a year, a year and a half that we've been working very hard to release the, the GKBM and I am very happy and very proud to announce that on Monday um, it was announced the release of the CKVM on public testnet. So uh, I will ask you to do an applause for all the Polygon team that they did that effort, that it's, it's enormous. So thank you very much. To <laughs> the title of the, of the presentation is GKVM versus EVM, full equivalence. Okay, so a little bit, what are we going to talk about? First of all, I will do like an overview um, to give some context about what is a CKVM and then I will go more, more concrete on what is the polygons CKBM. After that, we will go like to the topic of the talk, which is the, the difference between the CKBM, the polygons CKBM, and the EBM. So, what is a CKBM? There are some, well, there are here the, the, the three statements that I think that they define the minimum of a CKBM, which is that it is a virtual machine that executes smart contracts in a way that is compatible with zero knowledge proof computation. And why would we like to do this? Because our expertise is scale Ethereum. We want to increase like the throughput of Ethereum, the transactions per second, at the same time that, at the same time that we lower the fees. So how can we do it? We use ZK SNR technology to make cryptographic proof of execution of Ethereum-like transactions. In a summary, um, now, uh, when you process like a batch with a lot of transactions, you get a result, you get an output, you get an state. So how can other people, how can other ones to trust you that uh, this process, this process of the batch has been done with, uh, with correctness, has been done correctly following like the EVM constraints. They have to process also uh, those transactions and see that the output is the same. With zero knowledge um, proofs, we can like do it uh, easily because we can, uh, after processing all those transactions, create a zero knowledge proof. And if someone wants to validate that these transactions have been processed correctly, like following the constraints of the EVM, they only, or the CKVM in this case, they only have to um, verify that proof. And this is faster. Also, the verification of a proof is always constant, which is very interesting. Actually, this is like a, a game changer in the, in the ecosystem. I remember uh, it was around the SCC that a lot of companies were doing like release announcements of releases of GKVMs and it created like a lot of noise, especially in, in social media and, and in many places. And a lot of people was very confused because um, a lot of new words appeared there like uh, compatibility, equivalence, uh, what is the prover, uh, I don't know. Uh, but luckily, we have like Vitalik that he did a very interesting blog. I actually I strongly recommend it to, to read it when he classified the CKVMs in five times. He created what I like to say like the CKVM dilemma. Like if you have more performance, you have less compatibility. And if you try to have more compatibility, you will have less performance. Actually, at Polygon CKVM, we aim to be from type two. Um, we are not there yet because we still have to finish um, the precompiles, but we will be there very soon. Actually, we are like 2.2. So, um, the advantage of, of, this, of this type 2 is that it has a lot of compatibility. It has as much compatibility that we can talk about equivalence. The disadvantage is the performance. In, the, in Vitalik post, he said that it takes like a lot of time to generate the proof. Well, this is a bit relative. I mean, what is a lot of time? Um, now we are generating proof in around five minutes, but we still know how to do it, and we have a lot of ideas in mind on how to reduce this to up to five minutes. And also, it's not that a that, that big problem because you also can like parallelize the proofs. First of all, I would like to, to explain like, very simply, when we talk about equivalence, what are we talking about? <coughs> We're talking about that putting the batch of transactions in the EVM and putting exactly the same batch of transactions or the same block or whatever 
to the ZKVM and get the same state. And when I say state, it's like the same state root. And when they have like the same state root, it means that the storage, the, the state of the blockchain is exactly the same. It means that all the accounts have the same balance with the same nonce, with the same bytecode, with the same storage, with whatever. They are exactly the same. So are different black boxes because internally they work differently, but the equivalence means that for the same input, they have, they have the same up output. Mm. I could be like a lot of time explaining how we've done it and there's people here sitting that could explain it by far better than me. So I just do like some, some sentences just to put some context. Also, it's not, not the topic of the, of the talk, but we can discuss about it later. But at the end, um, what we're doing is a processor, okay? Um, and a processor has clocks. So each clock, it's like a new, test, a new state. And we're um, playing with these new states as steps. So as all um, processors, you can build a, an assembly at the top of them. You can build a, an assembly language to define these steps. And this is what we've done with a language called ZK Assembly. With ZK Assembly, we try to replicate the behavior of the EVM in an assembly language. When this assembly language is compiled, it creates like a build, which is a, a, a big trace of all the steps that um, will define the, the processor. On the other hand, we have the build, the polynomial identity language with its uh, like one step more of Circom 2.0. It's also a language done by our uh, tech lead, Jordi Bailina. And um, what the executor does is that he gets the ROM, which is the build of the ZK assembly language that I just explained it. He also uses the pill where there are the state machines of the Ethereum defined there. And he like verifies the correctness of each one of the steps of the ROM while it processes the transactions. So more or less, um, this, is, this is how it works. Like I'm just scrubbing the surface. <laughs> that this is how it works, the, the CKVM. And of course, as all other processors, we also have a RAM and a storage. Now let's talk about the, the variances between both of the, of the EVMs. Um, as you may know, the EVM uses a Patricia Merkel tree, while we are using a sparse Merkel tree, where the leaves are indexed. In each leaf of the EVM, we store, uh, well, the, it just stored, the, it just stored all the information of the account. We have the nonce, the balance, the storage root, and the code hash. But we are doing it differently. We are doing it differently. On each leaf, we only store one property of the account. So this brings me to the second difference, which is the hash. For the EVM, it's used the, the Ketchak. But we are using the Poseidon with the Goldilocks prime number as the finite field. This is for performance reasons. So when on Ethereum you want to get the, you want to get the key of a leaf, you have to uh, hash the address. But as we, all, we only can retrieve like one property of the account for each leaf, we have to hash the, the address with a property key. For example, if we hash the Ethereum address with the property key of balance, we will get the leaf uh, where is stored the balance. Another difference is that um, Ethereum uses uh, more than one tree to uh, define all the system. As you can see here, in one of the leaves, there's the storage root. The storage root points to a different uh, state tree where the storage is stored. We are doing it differently. We only have one tree that defines the whole system. Another difference is the memory. The EVM uses for each slot of memory um, eight bits, one byte. And we are using 256 bits, let's say like 32 bytes. So we are working with a bigger memory slot. This um, makes that the, when you are uh, querying to the memory, the, what, the information that you get is the same, but the way that you obtain the information is a bit different. I mean, the internal logic of some opcodes had to be changed a bit. I will show you an example now, for example, for the opcode mload. With mload, you uh, load 32 bytes from the memory. So, um, well, there are different cases. Some are more tricky than the other ones. This is the easiest one. When you want to get just 32 bytes, you just ask for it, and you have to return the full slot. In our case, it's the full slot because we have a slot of 32 bytes. 
the full slot of the, of the memory. In case of the offset is different from zero, well, when I say different from zero, I'm talking about mod 32. It means that uh, the beginning of the slot is not the beginning of the memory that you want to retrieve. Maybe you will have to get like half of the memory from one slot and half of the memory of the next slot. And it gets a bit more tricky. Sorry, when you when you want to retrieve more than 32 bytes. In this case, for example, more or less than 32 bytes. In this in the first case, for example, we are only retrieving some bytes of one slot. In the second case, just um, the bytes in the middle of the slot. And in the third case, it's like if you want to do it with an offset different from zero and also more than 32 bytes, then maybe you have to get some bytes from one slot, then get the whole bytes of the following three, four, five slots, whatever the length is, and some bytes from the last slot. The CK counters, yeah, is another, another difference. Probably this is very new for a lot of you. Um, I will say that the behavior is like gas, but it doesn't replace gas. I mean, we are computing the gas exactly the same way as Ethereum does. But um, as I said before, we have like a limited number of steps in the processor, right? So when you are processing a batch, you, ca you have a limited number of steps. And also you have a limited number of state machines that you can consume while doing a an opcode or, or an operation. So in our implementation of the ZKVM, I will show a, an example just after this slide. We have to check that we have enough counters to process that opcode. If we go out of counters, for example, uh, the, EVM, the ZKVM throws an error, which is out of counters. This error is not uh, user fault, actually. Um, it's like uh, a fault of, of the executor, but it can be solved uh, easily, like processing this batch, but with less transactions, because it means that the counters uh, the number of counters to process that, that batch has been exceeded. Here we have the, different, the name of the different state machines. For example, the binary one, it just uh, consumed when you compute a binary operation, or the key check when you do a, a key check hash. I will show you a, an example of an opcode. Well, it's a widely used opcode, it's the equal one. The equal opcode, he compares the two last, um, two last uh, values in the, in the stack and checks if they are equal. As you can see, this, is, this code is from GK assembly. As you, as you can see, the first two lines, here I am checking that I have enough counters to process that opcode. As you can see, the binary, I'm checking I have at least one binary um, counter for the state machine of the count, for one, one binary counter to process this, this opcode. It's because here I use the equal, and the equal consumes one binary. Also, I check the steps. Each one of the lines of the ZK assembly is a step of the processor. Here I put 120, although um, the number of lines is less. It's because I will go to read code, which means that all the process has been correctly in the best case, the best case scenario. But in the worst case scenario, I may fall out to a st stack underflow or maybe a rough gas or, or a stack overflow, and I, need, I and I will need some more steps to handle this error. We don't use the self-destruct. Actually, this is a difference now, but we have, um, we guess that it won't be a difference in the near future because um, probably Ethereum will accept the EIP 4758 where it replaces the self-destruct self by send all. So we are not using um, self-destruct from the very beginning. We are using send all, and I'm happy for it because self-destruct creates a lot of, a lot of problems. Um, what does the sendal does? Instead of removing the bytecode and the storage of the, of the account, when you call the self-destruct, what it does is to empty the account and send all the balance of the account to the um, account caller. At, at the end, we're just following the, this EIP. This is also a, a difference that will disappear uh, in the next months, because we are really working hard to, to finish this. And it's, this is the why we are not still type 2, but as I said before, uh, this, will, this will be over in a few months. Actually, we only support three precompiles from the EVM. We support the C recover, the identity, and the ModX. And this is one of our priorities. We are working to finish them all. Actually, the SHA 
2.56, it won't be that hard because uh, we've only done, done the easy recover. Maybe the easy binding, it's, it's a bit more tricky, but um, well, we're working, it's, it's working progress. Okay, uh, one of them is the opcode of the Xcoded hash. Obviously, if we are using a different hash, we're using the Poseidon instead of the Kitschak. This Xcoded hash is returning the, the hash in with Poseidon. Also, the block hash, um, well, this one is not really a difference because uh, it's not a, a variant because um, now on the EVM you only can get the block hash of the last 256 blocks. Um, now we are supporting to, to get it from the blocks, all the blocks in the blockchain from the, from the very beginning. And the memory limit. Mm. We have a limited memory of around 40 gigabytes. Um, this is different from the EVM because um, the EVM is unlimited. The limited is set by the gas, and you can put like 50 million gas in one, one block. Actually, uh, this limitation makes that in a batch, uh, you can put 8.5 million for each transaction, that this is the, the cost of the memory expansion, and we won't have any more memory. But I have to say that mm, a transaction with 8.5 million gas should be uh, enough to do whatever you want. It's also very easy like, to do different transactions. Uh, if you have a very big transaction, it can be like, split it in, in different ones. And also, this is currently uh, this last one. It's a different now, but it won't be a different anymore because we are also working on it, and it's one of our priorities, which is that we are actually not supporting EIP-155 and EIP-2718 transactions, but it's a matter, a matter of time. So in conclusion, well, you all have seen the, <laughs> the slide from before, but this is like now the most important moment of the, <laughs> of the presentation. Ah, uh, no, why is it happening? <laughs> no, exactly. It's that we are passing the 97% of the Ethereum test suites. I Thank think you. it's the best way and the most empirical way to show to the people that we are compatible, we're equivalent with, um, with, the, with the EVM. So, this is the final remark. It's we are fully EVM equivalent. And I also would like to, to send a message, like this in the second point which is that the difference that I've been explaining now, most of them are um, for, this, for aim to be more equivalent and m with a better performance. I mean, we've been building the ZKVM with a different toolkit than what was done with the EVM. So we have to take like, some technical decisions uh, with different tools, but to reach the equivalence. Also taking in account the performance. So I think that maybe also we have learned a lot from all those years of the EVM processing a lot of transactions. And actually, I think that probably people from the Ethereum Foundation, if they had to do the, the EVM uh, again from the very beginning, they will do some things different. And some of the things are the ones that we're trying to do. Like we've learned from them, we've learned from the EVM, and we've tried to do it uh, was better. And finally, to finish, just tell you that what I said at the, at the beginning, we are on public testnet, so we really encourage everybody to try to crash it, try to uh, test it, play with it. Uh, I mean, it will be <laughs> very good for us if you crash it so we can find a bug and we can iterate and deploy again, fix the bug and, and all this. So just to, to finish, thank you very much for, yes, thank you very much for, for being here. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, thank you.